Missing ministers or not, China's strategic ambition keeps growing. The next target is Turkey. Talks are underway for a new nuclear power plant. Ankara says the deal could happen soon. Chinese officials inspected possible locations. They're keen on this part, eastern Thrace, which borders Greece and Bulgaria. If things go to plan, the deal could be signed within months, which means China could build a nuclear plant in Turkey. Now, this raises questions. What does Turkey's nuclear landscape look like? Why China? And what are the wider strategic implications of this? Let's go one by one. Turkey has two nuclear power plants. The first is under construction. It is being built by Russia. Reports say it will be operational by next year. The second is still being planned. It's down to Russia and South Korea. Either of them could build the second power plant. So the Chinese one will be the third. But why does Turkey need so many? Because they are spending too much on importing energy. Look at these numbers. Turkey's overall import bill is $364 billion. $364 billion. Out of this, $80 billion is energy. That's around 22%. So Ankara wants to reduce this dependence. They want to replace imported energy with domestic nuclear power. Plus nuclear energy is considered green. And Turkey wants to be carbon neutral by 2050. For that, you need more nuclear power plants. In fact, three may not be enough. Ankara wants to produce 20 gigawatts from nuclear plants. That's four times the capacity of one plant. So the country needs a boost. Along with the big reactors, they may also need SMR, small modular reactors, SMR. Last year, they reached out to Washington for these SMRs. Talks were on to buy around 35 of them, but that was in December 2022. Since then, there has been no update. Did the Americans back out? Is that why Turkey is reaching out to China? Well, maybe, but China's nuclear dominance is not new. It has been decades in the making. In the last century, the U.S. was considered the gold standard. They had the best reactors. But recently, Washington has lost out. China is currently building 21 nuclear reactors. That's two and a half times more than any other country. So the lead is massive. It also helps that China's nuclear power companies are state-run. They have government patronage. They get all the subsidies. So they have the edge. Which brings us to the final question. What are the strategic implications here? Well, nuclear cooperation is not like any other. It's unlike any other. It's not like building a factory abroad. Nuclear plants are strategic assets. You can't just build and leave. Take Russia, for example. They are also using nuclear power to exert influence. Moscow has 34 reactors operating in 11 countries. Some of them are U.S. allies. In fact, Turkey is the best example. Like we said, their first nuclear plant is being built by Russia. It's called the build, own, operate model. Build, own, operate. Moscow will send thousands of engineers to operate this plant. Only 30% of the workers will be local. Do you see the implications here? Russia will have a permanent strategic presence in Turkey. And looks like China wants the same. But what does it say about the Turkish president, Recep Tayyip Erdogan? It shows that he's confident about China and Russia, that he trusts them. Just think about it. Would you trust your rivals with strategic nuclear assets? With more than 10% of your total electricity, chances are you won't. You would rather have your allies handle them, which is why Turkey's decision is so important and worth noting. We are talking about a NATO member here. Instead of going to the West, Erdogan is going to Russia and China for nuclear power. It's a sign of the growing divide. Last week, the West announced a new economic corridor with India. Erdogan opposed it. But the same Erdogan joined China's Belt and Road project. Last month, there was talk of Turkey also joining CPEC. That's the China-Pakistan Economic Corridor. Pakistan's den then Prime Minister Shehbaz Sharif invited Erdogan to join it. So the trajectory is quite clear. Erdogan is linking his fortunes to Russia and China. He can do that without fearing the U.S. After all, Ankara is still Washington's treaty ally, NATO member. We saw that leverage earlier this year. Finland and Sweden were looking to join the NATO. Erdogan agreed, but with conditions. Finland has joined the alliance. Sweden is still being held up. Reports say Erdogan wants F-16 fighter jets from the U.S. Then he will accept. 
So my point is, Erdogan finds himself in a diplomatic sweet spot. He can build reactors with China, he can buy fighter jets from the US, he can sell drones to Ukraine and purchase military systems from Russia, all without consequences. It's a fine line that the Turkish president is trying to walk.